Okay, I can see Max. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Welcome. Sorry, sorry for that small delay, Max. Uh, okay, thank you so much for finding finding time. So you had uh, access for a few days to Max's um, bio and, and information. For those who haven't uh, had time to to see it, Max is a uh, uh, founder and, and CEO of uh, Is Good AI, uh, which is an organization that is creating a uh, cutting edge uh, technology and uh, way to monitor impact in real time. Is that correct, Max? My, uh, um, yeah, well, monitor impact and also uh, give real time recommendations on how to get better outcomes, find gaps, early intervention, and yeah, actually I start solving the problems. Yeah. And Max is, you know, has a much uh, broader approach to uh, to this uh, endeavor than any other person I have uh, I have met, and and the other uh, tool that I have seen. Um, so this is one of the reasons, you know, it's really great to have Max with us. Also, another reason is Max is using uh, using artificial intelligence for that. So that's a, a very important um, element, and. Uh, you know, a, a fact about Max, Max um, describes himself as a uh, lucky person because uh, he has uh, a loving wife who is uh, you know, working and earning so that he could uh, dedicate his life to solving the problems of the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Well, not all of them, just help, helping other people solve the problems. Right. And spend time with your kids, which is which is great and very 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 important, and to teach them to uh, to spend. So welcome, Max. Floor is yours. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Um, uh, yeah. So so basically, we're we're um, yeah we're not a service delivery organisation, um, but we are working in a similar field that, that all of you are, and I'm actually really pleased to see that uh, there were lots of questions. And uh, still, you know, confusion around how do we know what we're measuring? How do we know what's important? Um, and I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. Mm -hmm. And and knowing what you should be measuring and, and, and not measuring and that type of thing. So can you see that blue screen? Yep. 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 Okay, so this is what um, Chris sent through to um, for me to share with you, and uh, that's to provide insights and share my experience developing the Is Good AI platform that we're working on, and also talk about the use of artificial intelligence for impact evaluation. And so, I suppose one of the one of the things here is is does anyone know why? we would even be looking at using artificial intelligence. And so you can turn off your mute and, and, and tell me if anyone has any idea as to why we'd be using artificial intelligence. Because we're dealing with data? If you prefer to put it in chat, I will be reading out um, questions in chat for Max. <laughs> um, would using artificial intelligence um, kind of take the human aspect out of things, uh, meaning that you know human biases maybe are not, uh, I guess, as much of a consideration. And um, well, having yeah. having non-biased evidence um, is is a very good thing indeed. It's not the primary reason, but if it, it is a benefit, that's for sure. Anyone else? Yeah. Is it because we're dealing with data and AI is a good way of organising data and understanding that data? Yes. That is, the, that is actually one of the primary reasons. And with the conversation you were having with Chris just before and so forth, you were sort of like saying, you know, 
what are we supposed to measure? How, you know, if we've got this information and that information and we've got other types of data and other types of information, you know, you've got your quantitative, you've got qualitative, you've got operational data, you've got activity data, you've got background data from, you know, uh, the general population, comparison data, baseline comparisons and everything like that. It, these are really complex problems. And things, you know, like riding your bike to school or riding your bike to work, for example, that you're talking about. There's, you know, 10, 20, 30 different reasons and benefits and all of those are going to have to have some type of information to back it up, some type of data. And when you, and then when you get into complex things like uh, homelessness and, and um, uh, uh, um, you know, international aid, disaster relief, uh, community well-being, resilience of community, uh, after things like ISO, um, there's and, and mental health as well on top of that, and employment, the amount of variables, the amount of different information, the amount of you know things that you have to try and work out, is this affecting our ability to create this positive change, these positive benefits that we're trying to make? It's really difficult for people to actually be able to make sense of all of that. And uh, so I discovered I, I discovered this pro the, the problem that you know a lot of you are experiencing is how do we actually know that we're creating the change from the programs that are running? How do we know the benefits to these people and to the community are actually happening? How do we know who's falling through the gaps? Um, and how and and how do we compare that to the general population or people who aren't in the in, in this program? To see which bits are working and which bits aren't working, and so from there, um, we've been working. I've been working around this problem for for eight years, and we created a workers cooperative and non profit charity that is dedicated to creating technology um, that is going to enable our people, planet, and prosperity to thrive in balance, and. It's very big and complex, like what Chris was saying. It, it is, we are looking at, you know, international aid organisations, humanitarian relief, and everything uh, affecting people, planet, sustainability, and enabling a better future. And so it's, it's a big chunk. And the thing is, if we don't know what's actually giving us the solutions that we need and what's actually providing our progress towards a better future, then we can keep doing heaps and heaps of stuff every year and actually end up having to spend more and more money every year on the problems that keep getting worse and worse, which is not the future that we want for our kids. And so our first product that we're doing out of Solutions for Humanity is uh, uh, the platform called Is Good AI, and that is to enable us to have the information to know what's good, and we can create a better world. And doing that for all of our social and humanitarian outcomes and enabling systemic change, we're improving outcomes and impact of the programs that are happening now, and enabling us to start creating a better future by enabling systemic change of the underlying problems. So it's not just the Band-Aid solutions. And for this to occur, um, we need to have you know, layered data, lots and lots and lots and lots of layered data and lots and lots and layered, layered metrics and, and, and information. We need to know the relationship between all of those so that we can create um, uh, better outcomes in the programs that are running and a better future from them. There's a youth homelessness and mental health um, case study that we've got on our website that you can go and have a look at. And I'm going to uh, walk you through our platform, um, a lo-fi uh, walkthrough of our platform and, and the basics of how it works. And um, there's got a little case study at the end of it that you'll be able to look at as well. And so 
what we focus on on what we're doing is is based around um, the actual outcomes and the actual change that we're wanting to enable. And this is this is some of the types of differences that we're able to see when we actually understand which part of every activity and which part of related programs and background information all around it is enabling us to make progress towards the change that we're wanting to see so that those people's lives are changed in the best way and that these programs can concentrate on the activities and the things that they do to get the greatest outcomes. We enable organisations to be able to do this by knowing what is good. And so it's fairly basic. It's a SaaS platform. Anyone that's used to you know, signing in and using an online tool, it's very, very similar. Uh, pretty easy to get started. And you um, just put in your own account information and then you create a workspace. A workspace is basically an organisation. So if you're Red Cross, um, I think someone said Good Cycles, um, whatever organisation it is, you've got your personal account, you create an organisation account. And the important part here is that once you come in, you start setting up a project. And I'll see if I can zoom in on that. No, I can't zoom in. But we focus on the outcome. So you put in your, your description of your project, the impacts of your project, the outcomes that are desired, the certain demographics, and your primary impact areas and indicators that you're working. And what the AI does here, it uses natural language processing and also uh, relationship mapping between all of these different variables. So if you've got a gender-based program, an age-based program, a location-based program, certain areas of impact, certain changes that you're wishing to see in these people's lives of what you're doing. Um, the AI, right from the start of the putting in this information, starts working out and mapping from all of this across thousands and thousands of different types of indicators, metrics and frameworks, the top indicators and metrics that you should be using. And, so, and you can also add your own ones, your own frameworks and your own theories of uh, how you're wishing to evaluate it. And the AI compares all of those and out of those millions of indicators, that are available, it finds the ones that have worked the best and the ones that are most valid for the particular outcome and change that you're wishing to, to affect from your program. And so you don't have to search through or anything else like this. This is actually telling you this has been proven to give you the best results. So this is the indicator and metric. And from that, based off that indicator and metric, you know what you should measure. So what you measure actually matters. It provides you the most uh, meaningful insights and gives you the greatest evidence of attribution towards your, what your program's doing. And it does that not just from your internal data, but also it, ma it tells you what you should be measuring from the surrounding information and the surrounding data it is often available from, from partnered agencies, open source uh, data services and government data services, because it says that this is actually really important, that if you're trying to change this, you need to know these other bits of information. And so once you connect those and, and, and it's told you the bits of information that you're supposed to have, you connect up to your data sources that, that are required for this. And so you don't have to recreate your forms and put your information in other areas or anything else like that. You know, if it's in spreadsheets, if it's in Salesforce or SurveyMonkey, CSV files, databases, whatever it happens to be, you connect each bit of those indicators to the live data stream that's coming in. 
So if you're doing live surveys or you've got live background data coming in from your data services, it actually streams in those individual data strings for those indicators and metrics so that you're not having to measure or, or do any extra work um, because it's just connecting to what you've currently got. And from what you've currently got, some of it you're not going to have access to immediately. But what it does do is help you prioritise the things that are most important. And from those things that are most important, connect what you have. And then for the next important ones that you should be doing to increase your data maturity and increase the, the attribution and the... Um, uh, the quality of the data and evidence you've got, it gives you a roadmap of the next things that you should be looking to move forward. And so once, you, once you've once you got those data sources behind, it, it's got data dashboards in there, the visualizations, and the visualizations um, have the actual indicators and metrics behind them so that, it, so that as it's coming in, it's actually there for a purpose. It's there based off the outcomes and the impact and the change you're wanting to do. And all of it is known by the AI of the direct relationship between all of the data streams that are coming in so that you can then assess all of that in real time and have known relations between all of the different types of information and data and evidence that's coming in and be able to tell you what is affecting what. And it's like a conversational chatbot. So it comes up and it says, hey, Chris, go and check out this because this is negatively affecting this outcome or this cohort or this demographic so that you have knowledge to be able to make more impactful decisions, to be able to improve the outcomes of the project. And it's very hierarchical as, as most of these projects and organisations are in that the, both the data reporting but the insights, very importantly, the insights is aggregates up. And because everything's mapped specifically to the change and the outcomes you're wanting to have from these programs, it gives you the best information for you to be able to change these people's lives and the best information to know where you should be deploying resources to get the best outcomes. So it tells you what is good, what's not good, do less of the things that aren't working, do more of the things that are working, where there's gaps. And it gives you these insights, just not from your project, but from other projects across the world solving similar problems for similar demographics and also across the programs within one organisation to say that this location you're delivering this service is not doing that well because of these demographic factors, the, these other services that aren't, aren't being delivered there, so therefore not solving this problem and the other one you can say well this is working really well because of because of this surrounding information and data and evidence around that and you can share that insight across to the other program and let them know what's and let them know um, how they may be able to improve with what they're doing and so as as you can probably tell in this it's there's huge amounts of relations and information and uh, all these relations that you're trying to work out and people simply cannot process that amount of data. You would have to have a thousand analysts sitting in a room looking at the information and the graphs and trying to work out what's going on. And what we do is we enable them not to have to do that. You only have to look un, uh, at the dashboard, the information when the AI is telling you that something, that there is an opportunity to do better that there's an opportunity to uh, uh, um, reduce damage that's happening so that you can, so that, so that, you know, you've got early intervention, almost real time, about five minutes turnaround time from the data streaming into actually having those insights. And, um, and so as that comes in, you can actually start improving things that happen immediately. And so you can see here that we've got, you know, uh, get underway, which we've got for that um, case study there. Uh, you can see there's basic information with participants by gender, LGA, and, um, and that comes um, 
and, and then we've got the background data of what those er what those areas are compared to the actual participants. And we can compare that the, the um, we can have the information that's based off who's in your program compared to the background data in from uh, the ABS or the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare of the number of people suffering from mental health problems, number of people suffering from um, uh, homelessness, and how those relate to each other. And so the first AI insight. Um, might come up and it would say that the data feed from the ABS about gender and homelessness is affecting the outcomes in, in our demographics dashboard and the information that we've got. And then clicking on the link, it takes them on a, on a, on a data dashboard journey. So it takes them on a, da on a visualization journey so that you can understand what the, what the AI is telling you. Because if we gave you a great big giant list of, of data, you'd, you'd find that hard to, to be able to make a decision from. And so here we can see that the, the uh, uh, staff that from the AI, uh, they're noticing that there's differences between the homelessness by gender in these types of areas in, um, in our program based of, compared to normal uh, AI stuff. And then we've got normal K10 scores, which are things that, that are, which are surveys that are done around the mental health and the mental well-being of information of, uh, of individuals. And we can compare that to the, to the, general population from the ABS data and also the general population in our program and see the differences between gender, location, everything like that. And the, and the AI understands the relations between all of them. And because it's understanding those differences, it can start telling you that, um, uh, that, there, that we can see that there's actually um, uh, background data and background information that says that the biggest reason for there being a higher incidence of females having mental uh, ho or being homeless is uh, actually family domestic violence. And, and so from the AI, we're able to actually then start learning from that and saying, well, you know, if there are incidents of family violence, we need to start changing our program for those people. And also, if we've noticed that these things are happening, we can have early intervention in the program um, so that when this happens and there's, and, and there's family and domestic violence happening, we know that there's, that we need, and it's female, we need to then be able to look at providing services to stop them from becoming homeless. And so it enables us to change uh, the program so that when a certain thing happens from the AI insights, we can actually start doing uh, pr predictive and, and, and proactive um, uh, activities in our program. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to stop sharing my screen there. That was a bad thing that happened. OK. There we go. And so we can start being proactive. And, and the reason we can be proactive is because we've got this high layered across layer, across layer of, of data, and we know the relationship between them, not just on the impact areas, not just on the demographics or the program, but also your actual location, your geographic location, the time relationship between things. And it's, it's, and for the AI to be able to then no notify us without us actually having to do the work, it does all the crunching work and enables us to just get better outcomes from our program. And and for organisations that, you know, like the Department of uh, Health and Human Services or big foundations and, and, and things like that, they know where to um, put the greatest funding and resources and which parts across their hundreds or thousands of programs are actually having the greatest efficacy to be able to get the best outcome for the for the people and the and the and beneficiaries of the program. And so and so I suppose there that like that that's the general outline of it. Um, I know Chris, you did say there was things around data collection, compilation and analysis um, was three points you had mentioned there. Did you want did you want me to go over any of those and our approach to those things? 
again, I'm I'm thinking that you know it's 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 fascinating really what what you are building, and it is a completely game changer potentially because it's it's actually uh, not just the thing that you know we we are used to seeing um, that is. Mm. Uh, yeah, we can we can use it as a tool to uh, to measure our impact, but it actually can suggest and analyzes and you know the more information it has, the better it becomes. Obviously, of you know where we should be and how we should actually build our theories of change. Uh, so before it would be great if we can briefly go into into kind of couple of comments into this area, but I'm mindful that people may have questions at that stage. Yeah. I just wanted to um, say, like, uh, I think Belinda already mentioned in the comments that she finds it extraordinary as well, but it's pretty cool. Um, it's really cool. Um, I've, I've been the having to do, like, the grunt work with spreadsheets for data analysis for impact evaluation in the past, and it takes a very long time to, like, manually put it in um, so that yeah. someone can upload it and all that sort of stuff. Um, the fact that you yeah. just completely eliminated that step is, is pretty cool. Yeah, well, the, the, and, and the feedback we've gotten from people in industry, you know, whether, whether you know, they're, they're a large to me, medium to large non-profit, um, you know, it's just too hard for a lot of small ones, so they, so they end up not really doing it. Um, but the medium to large um, non-profits and the aid organisations, the people who are doing the measurement and evaluation, they can spend 80% of their time just putting together information each month to do reports, to be able to give to the board in a pretty PDF, and then they talk about it, and then the next month they start again. And so that actual job, that four out of five days, <laughs> is just that data crunching stuff. And we're like going, that's just silly. Like, you know where all the information is. It's, the data is already in spreadsheets. It's already in applications. It's already in in all these places that you've got. And hopefully it's not written on pieces of paper in a notebook, which I know happens, but um, that's changing. Um, and and so the thing, and you don't want to have to just take everything you've done in the past and put it all over into this other program again and have to set everything up, try and work it out. It's a pain. And so what we did is we looked at, you know, the things that are happening out in the tech industry, you know, you've got things, you know, basic things, you know, really basic things like Zapier, where you just go connect this field, connect it to there, put it to here. And most of you have probably experienced, you know, trying to integrate stuff where you just authorise to this and it does there. We log in with Facebook or Google or whatever. And so for us, it's pretty much the same thing. We've, we've, there's partners and technology platforms out there that enable you to just say, oh, I've got to get, I know where this information is. I go and connect it to that column in this spreadsheet over here. And it's authorized on my you know, Google OAuth or my OneDrive OAuth. So I can always turn it off. And we're only getting that one bit of information. So like your security exposure is nothing. It's actually live in real time. And once you've set that up the first time into your reports and into your projects and your, and your data dashboards and everything, you never have to touch it again. It's just always up to date. It doesn't matter if it's coming from 10 sources or 20 sources. It comes in and our and, and you don't have to change the source information. Our platform actually transforms all the dates to one date format. It transforms all the number formats, all the geocodes to one format. So no matter where it's coming from and the formats it's coming in, you've just got live reports. And so if someone sort of like says, oh, how, how's this project going? You just go, oh, here's the URL, share it with them, press a the little share button, put their information in, and, and they can go and have a look at it. You can even embed these things on uh, a website so that if you're, you know, if you're an institutional investor like a, like a super fund that's got impact, um, uh, uh, impact, impact funds or you're, you're a large NGO working with international funders and banks and so forth, you can actually just have like the dashboards embedded on your on your website to be able to update them in real time. And the people running the programs and funding the programs are also getting the AI insights to be able to say, hey, this is doing really well or this thing is not doing so well. 
someone, I think someone just asked us how easy it is in a small NFP. It's, it's, we've designed it um, so that it's extremely hierarchical. And so if you've only got one project that you're doing, um, is it works for you and what you're, what you're doing. And so, and so, and, and the easiness of it, it's not designed for data science people. It's not designed for technical people. It's designed for the poor person who sits at the front desk who got told, hey, your job is also do, not only just, um, you know, running the office, your job is also um, doing up the reports now. Or if you're a volunteer organisation and, and, um, and, you know, no one's actually got a real job in reporting, as long as you can open up a computer and do a select from an Excel spreadsheet the right column of information, then it will bring that in. And so, where, so say, say you're doing something like that, when you connect up that column, it will say, hey, what, what is this column of information? Is it gender? Is it an age? Is it a location? Is it, you know, what, what is the format of this information? And so you just go, Yep, that information is relevant to what we're doing. It is this type of thing, and our platform connects that up. And whenever it brings in that historical data, and then the new stuff that comes in as well. So the first time you put it up there, it's all done after that point in time. Um, way way easier. Like I I, I struggle with Excel, um, and I I can use this because it's got little check boxes and stuff you can select as you go through. Is there is some more advanced options for people that want it, but we're, we're actually trying to remove the requirement for advanced technical options. Um, and we probably won't have everything there, uh, you know, to start off with, but this is a long-term project. It's a, it's a, we're building a technology impact infrastructure for the future. Um, and so, and so it's, it's not a short-term thing. We're not going to sell to Google in five years or anything. This is actually something that's there for the future generations to enable that change to happen um, on a global basis. Um, and, and through the, um, our, our Solutions for Humanity Cooperative um, and, and the charity there, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be using our funds and our resources and, and that base platform to create more projects to be able to do more good that are, that are having specialised applications like girls, uh, girls education, um, uh, specific uh, uh, circular economy and donut, donut economics type um, uh, sustainability for certain things. So um, there's a whole, whole heap of um, that easy stuff on the big basis, but also really easy for that small organisation to do it as well. Um, and you don't have to, and people sort of like say, oh, it's too complex, you don't have enough data. And it's like, damn, there's enough data out there. You know, you only need like three or four things from your program. And then all the background data that can tell you how, you, how you're working within it all is actually available from the government and other social services. It's, it's there. It's just, it's too complex. There's too much which is why we're trying to simplify it down into just tell us what you're doing, tell us the problems and who you're helping, and, yeah, select the things that are actually going to work for you and, and make that easy. And a little bit like I was saying about knowing that roadmap of, of, of how you can keep on improving and doing better. Um, what was another? We've got the question from James, and is platform ready to use or is or is still in the process of building? Uh, we've got closed betas at the moment, and we're, we're never going to stop building. The backend data and AI side of stuff's all done and being deployed at, at the moment with the current build. We've got the web app front end that's being redone at the moment. We're just about to start um, some active pilots it's been going for eight years, uh, research and development, and three years to, and three years on the tech build. Um, so we're on version five that we're deploying at the moment. Um, and so next year, some some sometime in the first half of 2021, is going to be 
are available for people to openly sign up. In the meantime, we're looking for collaborative partnerships, um, which is like the one, you know ones we're doing with WWF and, and, and uh, other organisations um, uh, building that out. Um, the foundations, yeah, so the people who've, and, and so uh, some of the foundations and also the funding, sort of funding bodies are putting into the, putting into the, re the requirements to have better um, evidence around actual outcomes, not just we spent this amount of money and we did 5,000 things, so therefore we had 5,000 impacts, awesome. Um, you know, it's 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 actually like the what's the actual outcome of this? What's the what's the how can you attribute the value of your program to that impact? And so um, yeah, there there are foundations and so forth that are doing that, and we've already got a number of people that have been putting in uh, the the um, uh, the use of our platform into their applications that they've made for grants and, and funding and so forth. And I mean, some, some of the areas that we're, that we're looking at is like in, in you know, some of the, you know, Sierra Leone, um, Philippines, Iraq, um, uh, PNG, and so, and, and, and right down to, you know, Eastern Melbourne or Western Melbourne um and 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 small nonprofits there and social enterprises and b corps as well um and so as they're putting in their their their, their funding applications they're building us in into that and um and at the same point in time uh uh some of those organizations are more or less gifting and giving them our platform actually as an integration to their grants programs and so, because they want to know what's working and what's not working, um, so that then they're actually saying, if we're giving these grants out, you're going to give this, and so they give that to you as part of your funding. Now, the N NFPs aren't using all of the same metrics, and that's be and, and that there's millions of reasons for that, and part of it is because there's millions of metrics, and all of the stakeholders and the funders have different things they align to, and so. There are certain ones like the Sustainable Development Goals, um, CDP, um, other other thing, you know, Project Drawdown um, type uh, standards and frameworks, which people want to know how I'm tracking against those. And so, what happens in our platform is that you can use all the different, you know, the indicators and stuff that are specific for what you're doing. And that are doing the best one because there's millions of them. There's seriously millions of indicators and metrics that you could possibly use. And so, and so depending on the very specific things of your program, you might end up using some of the same metrics as some of the similar NFP that are doing it. And over time, we'll get better and better, better of all of the new frameworks that keep coming out, all the new theories and research that comes out. From all of those, we'll get better and better at understanding the specific ones that together, like in this jigsaw puzzle piece, are enabling change to happen. And so over time, despite there being thousands of frameworks and theories and researchers, over time we'll work out what the puzzle pieces are that fit together to get the best outcomes for that problem. And so one of the things that people have said to me, and it was actually an accountant that said to me, he said, it's very, very easy in accounting. It's just like money. And so everyone knows this is your profit and loss report. This is, this is, this is your inventory reports. This is how your depreciation works. It's, it's you know, that money side is, is something there's set frameworks and ways that they do it. And he said, in the future, if anyone wants to know how they can solve this problem, on the millions of indicators that are out in the world, you'll be able to tell them the specific ones that go together to solve that problem for that demographic in that location with these surrounding factors. And we should, over time, start being able to model these things and basically play sim earth on we're trying to solve this problem in this location. What's the seven different variables we could take here? which ones are looking at doing better so that we can give 
recommendations and the knowledge for those people on the ground, the subject matter experts, the people delivering it, giving them that information to be able to make the decision on the ground that's actually the most likely to, to do that. There might be two or three recommendations that they can choose from, but it's actually going to be based on proper evidence, proper information and proven um, uh, best practice towards how they make that decision. Important, I think, to uh, to look at the process so that people wouldn't see that as a silver bullet solution myself. No, that platform says this, we have to do that because there obviously is a risk around that. It's, it's um, only the knowledge and the recommendations. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That, uh, um, I, the robots are not taking over the world. The robots are here to provide us with better information to be able to make better choices. Yeah. Um, you should never, and, and it's the same way that the that AI is working in the medical profession. Um, in the medical profession, people need to be out, a, a surgeon in, in one particular area will need to read for a day and a half every day to be able to keep up with the latest research. Impossible to do. Impossible. That's right. And so what the AIs do is say, is you're putting your symptoms, same sort of thing like for us, you know, you put in the problem you're solving for this person, all that sort of stuff. They do it for, for medical surgery. And based off the symptoms and everything else like that, the AI gives a better recommendation and better information for that for that surgeon to be able to perform that operation and understand those treatments with the latest evidence, the latest information, the latest techniques to be able to get the best outcomes for that person they're operating on. Yeah. And we're doing very much the same thing, but on you know social and humanitarian environmental problems. And we had a question from Magnus and uh, Penelope asking about the costs. So what's the question? Yeah, so, um, Magnus wanted to ask a question too. Yeah, so we're looking at our theory is that it's $200 per month um, for our project as a, as a baseline type thing for um, for purpose type organizations. Uh, commercial, commercial will be $800 for an organization and then $800 per month. And then, of course, that because they're commercial or um, uh, a, a company, they're paying more money and that allows us to then start gifting to the micro top type nonprofits as well. Um, so we, we're so we're going to have some stuff that's going to be free for smaller organisations, um, but the general baseline is $200 for anyone who's trying to do good in the world, be $200 a month. If we can, we'll make it free. And then for the people who are actually more focused just on making money, um, they'll be paying a bit more. Magnus? Um, yeah, my, I think my question was sort of answered with the hospital surgeon analogy, but um, I might as well ask it. Um, so does the AI learn from, I guess, the, the I think you mentioned maybe the impact that is being reported, uh, or is it learning from us and how we would interact with it? I think the thing that sort of triggered this question in my mind is when you first set up your workspace, your workplace, um, it, it uh, retrieves from all the different um, metrics that you can have. Mm -hmm. So does the AI spit out like the top metrics that people have used in the past or is it the top metrics that are showing to be more, um, yeah, able to show more greater impact or more accurately show impact? Like how does the AI do it? Yeah. So. So there's so the, the the base view for this is is uh, is a bit of a um, mashup between those two things, and so these are the these are the most likely that have been used before for successful programs in this area that are aligned with your particular project. So so it'll be collating all of that type of information and give you the top, but then it will also allow you to filter the view based off. Um, the, the outcomes, the impact area, the geographic location, uh, the demographics of the of the people um, against a particular framework. So if you're wanting, if, if you're most more focused on a particular type of framework that the metrics are in, you can use that as well. Um, but it will not, it will recommend you based off what 
the information you went to about your project, the related demographics and the location. What you've put in there is your organisational priorities as well. So if you're the um, uh, Save the Children, you're going to have certain priorities that are higher than WWF or someone like that, for example, or for Red Cross for the fires. Um, and so it'll weight its recommendations based off your organisational priorities as well as the particular project that you're doing. You will also learn, so, so if you're doing, you know, the, the um, mental health and homelessness type program that we've got on the case study there, if there's one of those that's running in Sweden, for example, and it's got a similar demographic and similar problems, and it learns something about particular indicators or metrics or, or, or things that ha have happened successfully in Sweden, and it says, the problem's an 80% match, the demographic's an 80% match, I'm going to recommend to these people that are running this program in Richmond, I'm going to give them a share, I'm not gonna share the data, but I'm gonna give them a shared learning that it has been shown on an 80% chance that you should be looking at using this indicator and that metric, that use these types of data sources and from that, because you are actually doing the delivery of that program on the ground, you're going to go, well, hang on a sec, we haven't got any programs or any activities that we do that's related to those indicators and that, and that evidence. So if this has shown to actually get a better outcome, what in our programs and in our activities that we're doing, we start changing to get the evidence that we're affecting those metrics. And if we're affecting those metrics, how is that going to help improve our program overall? And so, and so what it does, it can, it, and it does that both for positive and negative things. And so, and so if it's a positive thing, it'll, it'll inform across organisations and, and across the world of, of things that you can take opportunity from, but it will also inform on things that have been shown that have been particularly problematic with a matching and quality score and everything so that you can understand it um, so that you can make a decision on how you can better imp that as part of your program and your activity. Um, and so and so part, part of that process is, is shared learnings but it's also gap analysis of what you're doing compared to people who've been successful in solving this problem. Really great and fascinating. Yeah, and one, and one of the problems is, and, and this is a, it, something that absolutely disgusts me, is that um, is that at the moment the, the government gives out grants of you know ten million dollars or something to to an organisation to uh, run a run a social welfare program, and at the end of that period, they'll have, you know, so they'll say, we'll run this program for two years and at the end of it, you need to give us a, a, a pretty PDF report. Um, and they do that. They, um, they account for all of their money. They, they say what they did. They might actually have some positive learnings and some positive and, and, and uh, some positive things that they'd be able to teach everyone else in the world about what was really great about what they did. They'll hide all of the bad stories because they don't want to tell people the bad things. And they'll give the report, the government will sign off on it, and then it's put in a drawer. None of the data is available. None of the insights are available. None of the information is available. None of the learnings are available. And so we may have already found the solutions for a lot of these global problems and these systemic problems that are affecting Western world as much as it is developing world. But we don't know because it's all hidden and no one tells the bad stories. They've got some nice stories, but no real evidence. And it, we, we actually spend 20% of global GDP on these problems each year, $18 trillion, 20% of all of the money in the world trying to solve these humanitarian and social problems. And it is increasing every year and getting worse. We have no idea why, because all of it's hidden. 
And that's another reason why you are potentially really a game changer. It was uh, really great. I think we could talk here uh, at least for the for the coming weekend still because oh, yeah. it's such a, such a big and uh, uh, really fascinating uh, thing. Necessary, yeah? yeah. And at the end of the day, uh, this sort so, of stuff should be yeah. easy. This sort of stuff, you know, solving problems yeah. should be easy. So, it's not money. It's not a money problem. It's a knowing what the hell works problem. Mm. And knowing how to do this, that's another thing. But that's, uh, uh, I think that's a, that's a really uh, potentially a big, big game changer what you're building. Thanks, thanks so much, Max, for, uh, for all that insight. This is so great to, to hear about the cutting edge technology and, and its application. Um, it's coming soon. <laughs> Looking very much looking forward to it. Uh, now, I think everybody needs a, a bit of a break, so we can uh, we can have a uh, ten, 10 minutes, and uh, we come back. It's three uh, thirty thirty five on my three three forty five, so quarter quarter to four. Uh, we come back. We will start looking at data collection. And then we'll hear uh, from uh, Dr. Kiros about um, social return on investment. Thanks, thanks again, Max, uh, for, thanks, Chris. Time for coming. And uh, I, know, I know you wanted. Uh... Uh, and, and feel free to. Um...